Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here, and back with a Flames of War painting tutorial. In this guide, I will be showing you how to paint a US Bradley IFE in a scheme that would be utilized in a European theater. And as usual, I'll be making use of the Vallejo range of paints. Before we start painting, we first of all need to apply a primer. This is so that the later layers of paint will properly adhere to the miniature surface. For this step, I've chosen to use a black spray primer, as this will help to create shading in those recesses when we start to do a dry brush with the main color of the scheme. To quickly and easily achieve the olive green coloration of the armor, we'll be applying a dry brush of US dark green. Dry brushing works by loading up a fairly large brush with some paint before wiping it onto a tissue or a piece of paper. And this is to remove some of the excess and also work the paint through the bristles. Ultimately, we only want a small amount of paint to actually remain in the bristles for this step. With your dry brush ready, quickly drag it across the whole miniature with some broad strokes. You will notice that paint will start to accumulate onto the edges and flat surfaces, but not into those deeper recesses. Because we're applying it over the black, the result is some instant shading, which helps to bring out those details. For some of the areas of the model, a large brush might not quite be able to reach into them. So for these areas, you may need to switch to a slightly smaller one instead. Once you've applied a couple of coats of this, you should achieve a good, solid starting color. After the base coat, we next want to pick out the raised edges of the tank and also lighten the color ever so slightly. I wanted to use a color that was similar in hue to the primary base color, but was a little more faded. Ultimately, I opted to use German camo beige and some more dry brushing. By lightly dragging this lighter colored paint across the whole miniature, the paint will start to accumulate only onto the harder edges and the upper parts of the model. This lighter paint will simulate the appearance of light falling onto the IFV and help to improve its realism as well as its level of detail. Next, we want to begin picking out some of the smaller details of the tanks with some flat brown. Begin by taking some of this paint and thinning it down with a little medium or some water, creating a mixture of equal quantities of each. You can then use this thinner mixture to paint the wooden tool handles stowed on the hull of the tank, as well as the metal tracks. This will create the appearance of dirted, rusted metal. By thinning out the paint, you'll make it much easier to apply and should your first layer not completely cover, you can apply additional coats as needed. Much like the last step, we'll be painting some areas of the tracks and stowage items. These will include some of the secondary weapons, tow cables, stowage items, and the rubber trim of the road wheels. We want to apply a base coat of black gray to all of these areas, thinning the paint in the same way as before. To apply some damage to the paintwork, we'll be using some black. Instead of using a regular brush, take a small piece of sponge or foam and then rough up the edge. Dip this into the paint and remove any excess onto a piece of paper, much like we do with the dry brushing, until only a small amount of paint remains. You can then very lightly dab this over the whole hole, which will leave behind small flecks of darker paint, creating the appearance that paint has been chipped away on areas that would likely be to be worn or damaged. I should note that once your base coats are completed, this is the best time to apply any decals, as this allows any later weathering created by washes or dry brushing to be applied over those markings too. Now that all the base coats have been completed, we can now start working on the washes. If you're looking to boost the visibility of details, washes are fantastic as they will flow into the recessed areas and create the appearance of shadows. The first wash to apply is sepia wash, however, using it straight out of the bottle, it'll be a little too strong, so we first need to water it down a little. Mix water into your wash until you have a consistency similar to what you see here. Now that the wash has been thinned, we can start to apply it in a localized and targeted way, rather than an all-over application. Using a fairly small brush, I will be directly applying some of the sepia wash into some of the details on the hull. Once tried, you'll find that those small details will stand out much more than they did before, and that the tank will have a slightly dirty appearance too. The next wash to apply is black wash, which has been thinned in the same manner as before. This time we'll be applying it as an all over wash to the black grey details, as well as the tracks. Once the washes are completed, the model is almost complete. Before we finish, however, we want to add some extra final detail and weathering to the vehicle in the form of dried mud. 
By dry brushing some caulky around the bottom of the side skirt and the tracks, we will help to create the appearance that dust and dirt churned up by the tracks has settled onto these areas of the vehicle. And here we have the completed Bradley IFV. Now, whilst I focus on just one specific vehicle in this video, you could easily apply the same colors and techniques to other US vehicles using the European scheme as well. You can find a full list of all the paints used in this tutorial in the description below, along with any other equipment that I've used to create this video. If you enjoyed this video, please do let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my latest videos. And if you're interested in joining a community of like-minded individuals, then check out my Discord in the description too. And so the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching and goodbye.